Coming up on Raider Vision, we continue our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, and we visit Halloween Horror Nights. I'm Jordan Bankson. And I'm Molly Santini. And, and this, this is Raider Vision. Vision. Hispanic Heritage Month is being celebrated throughout the month of October. Reporter Luca de Larta spoke with teachers in the World Language Department to get an understanding of their meaning of Esperanza. It is that time of year we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. This year's theme is Esperanza, which means hope. We sat down with some Spanish teachers to talk about their cultural backgrounds and what this year's theme means to them. When you look at Esperanza in the dictionary, it says that it's an aspiration that something happens, something comes true. Esperanza is the hope that the things you aspire for, you wish for, come to reality. Novus Caderin grew up in Cuba and has fond memories of her childhood. She was a teacher in Cuba, and once she arrived in America, she studied to further her career in the United States. For Caderin, life in the United States was remarkably different than life in Cuba. So many opportunities, like you say, and, and overall freedom. That's what I recall that I, I, I felt so free to speak, to do things, opportunities to make a decent life, to give your children a better future, to put bread on the table, to be successful in whatever you want to as long as you work hard for it. Spanish teacher Mirta Oramas had a similar sentiment with her family having also left Cuba in hopes for a better life and the idea that hard work would eventually lead to success. As a Cuban, the, the idea of hope, esperanza, is what keeps us going. That's why my father decided to leave Cuba looking for a better place, for more opportunities, for freedom. And the hope that if you work hard, if you do your best, and that's my philosophy in life, there is always hope that the future is going to be even brighter than the present and even better than the past, but never forgetting those ancestors that past that makes us who we are. For Aramas, the theme of hope is deeply rooted in her Christian beliefs, which helped her throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is what helped me survive throughout this whole pandemic thing, is that there's a higher power watching over me that has a plan for me and that will always help me survive and thrive and that's what for me is is hope one thing that all the teachers could agree on was the passion that they felt for teaching and how they enjoy working with their students i enjoyed explaining going over the activities and explaining them to other kids and i knew by then i already knew this was what i wanted to do in life you guys the students is it's like having hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children. Yeah, I, I really feel that I make a difference. For Radio Vision, I'm Luca Delerta. Last Tuesday, many students and faculty partied and had fun at Salsa Night, continuing the celebration of Hispanic culture. Salsa Night took place in the Upper School Miller campus, and students, parents, and faculty danced with performers La Niña y la Nena. Salsa Night, that's uh, a teamwork. The World Language Department and the Dance Department working together. Special dancers and performers, La Niña and La Nena, are um, showing us the moves and performing for us too. There's food, drinks, parents, students. Everyone loved the food and Salsa Night was a success. The dancers, the energy, the students dancing, the food, and everybody in attendance had an amazing time and that's ultimately the most amazing thing. Salsa Night was a success as everyone had fun dancing and celebrating Hispanic culture. Halloween Horror Nights is back this year for its 30th anniversary. My fellow anchor was just there and will tell us all about it. How was it? It was great. I've gone to Halloween Horror Nights for several years and I'm glad it's back. Let's take a look at how Universal Studios has brought back Halloween this year. Halloween Horror Nights is back and better than ever. This year, starting from September 3rd all the way to October 31st, we came to check it out. Every year, Universal Studios is transformed into Halloween Horror Nights. Ten haunted houses, five scare zones, and two live shows are scattered around the park, guaranteed to make you jump out of your skin. This year's theme is Never Go Alone, marking the event's 30th anniversary. Haunted houses are walk-in indoor attractions where the guests can walk through the experience while being jump scared. Each haunted house has a unique theme. The Beetlejuice Haunted House, based on the movie Beetlejuice, is a favorite among visitors. So my favorite part about Halloween Horror Nights was probably the Beetlejuice house because it felt like you were walking into the movie, especially this one like hallway where the walls were moving. 
Scare zones are specific spaces laid out throughout the park where visitors can walk through and be scared by scare zone actors. Each scare zone also has a theme. Two live shows are presented in this year's Halloween Horror Nights. The shows are incredible half-hour specials that feature fire and water shows, pyro, and aerial performances. The two performances are called Marathon of Mayhem and Halloween Nightmare Fuel. After four years of coming to Halloween Horror Nights, this year the show was definitely the best one ever. It was very fun and enjoyable. It was great. Because of the COVID pandemic, Universal Parks encourage face coverings, social distancing, and sanitization. Guests must confirm that they are not experiencing any COVID or flu symptoms before attending. If not, then they must refrain from visiting the park. Halloween Horror Nights was definitely a success. We're so happy it's back. Reporting for Radio Vision, I'm Amelie Santini. Now to Julia with weather. Thanks, Jordan. Today through Thursday, we have mostly clear skies for a change, with highs in the upper 80s and winds northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday, we start to see isolated thunderstorms, which begin to clear up around noon. Temperatures stay in the high 80s. Going into the weekend, we're greeted with intervals of clouds and sunshine. Our warm temperatures continue with highs in the upper 80s and the winds out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now here's Jonah with the sports. The boys and girls bowling team sent a match against Ferguson Highly Academy. The girls lost to Ferguson, but team captain Hadley Bowen bowled a 146 high game and a 389 series. The girls will travel to Pembroke Pines on Thursday to take on Crop. The boys lost to Hylia. Jordan Banks rolled a 135 high game with a 339 series. The team will take on Berlin tomorrow at Bird Bowl. The swim teams had dual meets last Tuesday. The boys had a tough swim against Berlin and Somerset. After falling short to Berlin 121 to 49, they picked up the win against Somerset 88 to 80. The girls had a great day beating Lords 131 to 39 and taking down Somerset 118 to 50. Coach George says the girls' team is really coming together this year. Uh, overall, I think you know the, the, the freshmen and the sophomores are doing a really good job. Juniors are doing a great job. Seniors are doing a great job with leadership. The girls' volleyball team lost to the Firebirds of Durrell Academy Thursday night in straight sets. They play American Heritage this afternoon. The boys' varsity football team came out with a massive 43-0 win last Friday at Aaron State Christian. Carson Haggard led the way with 173 passing yards, connecting with Nicola Donaldson, Jalen Brown, and Kenny Williams for a total of three touchdowns. Cedric Irvin contributed two rushing TDs of his own. Quarterback Carson Haggard says it was all a team effort. Uh, I think we had a really good game. Uh, we came out on top and got a great win. It's always good to come out with a win. Uh, at first, I thought we played a little sloppy on offense, and our defense kept us in it. And then our offense started to get things around, and our O-line blocked great, and our receivers making great catches, and said he was running the ball great. So overall, a great team win. The Raiders play Champagne up Friday in the homecoming game right here on Shawnton Memorial Field at 4. Be sure to show up and show your Raider pride. With his family and a large group of students and faculty to support him, junior running back Cedric Irvin announced he plans to play college football on a national broadcast of CBS Sports from the Upper School Student Union last Wednesday. And um, with that being said, I'll be taking my talents to Notre Dame. Irvin had plenty of schools interested in him, but Notre Dame was the one. I picked Notre Dame just because of the tradition that they have of great alignment, but not just great alignment, they're a winning program, and um, I feel like I can be a part of that and be great. Irvin is currently ranked eighth in the nation at running back. That's our sports, now back to Amelie at the desk. Thanks, Jonah. And now, readers, here are the top five things for you to know this week. The homecoming week wall decorating has officially started. The seniors got out to an early start yesterday while freshmen, sophomores, and junior classes will be working on theirs today. Wednesday, we have a pep rally with class skits and our sun dancers. The visual art department's new exhibition, Art Gallery, is taking place in the glass cases outside of room 215 throughout the school year. Make sure you check it out. Friday is our homecoming game versus Chapna at 4 p.m. Come to school already wearing the navy and white and show your rate of pride for Spirit Week. And finally, Saturday is a homecoming dance starting at 8 and running until 11.30 p.m. Don't forget to vote your homecoming court. Thanks for joining us this week. If you have anything to share with us or want something featured, email us at radiovision at gulliverprep.org. We'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.